Can you ask me a question too? You sure can. Okay. Okay. Make me feel comfortable. I got you. I, yeah, I, I always, I want you to ask what I have. Okay. <laughs> you know. Okay. So let's talk about early childhood. Early childhood. Yes, okay. early childhood. What was your first experience with music? Yeah. Oh, scare me. You know, probably most most entertainers. I definitely had the. You know, imitating the Jackson Five in front of family company and stuff like that. My father played guitar, so um, I don't know if there was ever a time I didn't remember my father playing guitar. Like, there's even a, there's even a baby picture of me literally laying like I can't keep my head up, and my father laying next to me. He's holding he's holding the guitar. He's not even holding me. I'm like laying on the side of the bed. My father <laughs> on the bed playing guitar. So that kind of was like the soundtrack of my childhood, which is kind of bad, and it was not even. It wasn't. It, I kind of grew up knowing not to touch my father's guitar. It wasn't really like that much of a rule, but it was just so much part of him. It was like that was his. Uh, so I didn't start playing guitar. Never got good at it, but never started playing guitar until I was into college. You know. But um. But you know, the you know the fa the family um, record player times. My father put a record on. The whole family in the living room dancing and and then discovering like oh, somebody really put this together. Oh, this is really an album. You know that kind of. Realizing the basement, there's a lot more of these records and really going through them. And, you know, I just remember a lot of that fun stuff. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I mean, you say don't play guitar, do you play any? I'll play everything enough to write. Like I play enough guitar to write, play enough keys to write. You know that kind of that kind of stuff. But the way these amazing musicians in my band, I I don't play that level in any form or fashion. So you know, when it comes to getting on stage and trying to impress, I was I was first date ability. Like I could play a guitar for a first date. I could play keys for a first. I could really impress somebody on <laughs> the first date. You know, I got those certain chords on first date. The deal closed. Deal closing chords. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> By the second date, she's like, hey, "You really can't play that thing, can you?" Okay. Yeah, I got you. Know. You. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Too late. Oh my gosh. So, um, what well, can you remember the first song you ever sang? Like you said, okay, yeah. Oh, uh, I don't know if I remember the first, first song I was saying in church was uh, I'm going through, I was seven years old. Uh, I'm going through, hey, I'm going through, I don't care what the rest of the world decides to do. Uh, that was, that was okay. seven. Um, and I can remember, I mean, I'll have to go back and think of just like first time I heard something, first whatever, but the first song that I remember singing would be that one in church. And I was extremely nervous, but after I sang it, I didn't want to sing my sister's songs. I got in trouble that day. It was a great, it was a high and a low that day because I, I, I had a temper tantrum on stage pretty much in front of church because I wanted to then sing myself. I was, I'm ready, I'm good, I'm warmed up now. What song my sister sang? I'm gonna sing that one too. So, so I stood up there and pouted while she sang her song because I couldn't sing it. Um, but that, that was seven, I think before that, who knows, I had a ton of songs. I probably just came out the womb singing really, you know? Oh, okay. So, like, after, once you, let's go back, fast forward, mm -hmm. and you had your, you wanted to become a professional, and you sang your first song, what was that like? Oh, well, that's probably different stages. I mean, I, I, I'll tell you, first song I remember really right was a song called Continuously. Like, continuously, I keep on loving you. Continue. I was probably like 12, 13, you know what I mean? Like, just wrote this little keyboard song, called a girl, put on speakerphone, like, hey, I got this song I wrote for you. She was not impressed, but, um. Um, but then, uh, you know, by the time I by the time I really wanted to become a professional singer songwriter, I was I was really writing a lot. So I mean, with, I came to Howard University with recording equipment. You know, I was recording songs even freshman year. The majority of friends that I gained my freshman year was because oh, you could do it with the, the stuff in your in your dorm room. The dorm room was probably the size of this little corner. You uh -huh. know what I mean? It was probably five of us in there all the time the whole freshman year working on music and um but the moon was probably the, you know the first time we were like wow well, i'm gonna be able to get a record deal off this song you know it's probably when it really stood out but uh but even you know i had a song called uh, the grandma song that i never released and i, I was nicknamed grandma almost through my majority of my time at howard because of this, this song i had at howard called the grandma song yeah just a just a little piano song i wrote with my grandmother how much i missed it you know what i mean so I, so so i gave i'm in la i hear like Grandma, I know exactly who it is. Like one of my friends from Howard, like Elsa, or, I mean Issa, or one of the one of the, the certain people that did music or was in the music musical circle. They all, to this point, still call me Grandma. Would you ever think about releasing that? I probably would. You know, the, the the when I finished doing the song, the people I did the song with, I I, I had to try to track them down, kind of all in different worlds now. So, mm -hmm. 
you know, I probably want to do that rather than put the song out and then somebody's lawyer <laughs> said, you know, I did the bridge on that joint, you know, <laughs> you know, you know try to figure it out. Okay, okay, so if you were to describe your music in three words, what would you say? Oh, uh, truly honest music. Uh, yeah, truly honest music, and it's just really whatever we feel. And to, to describe the three words is really, you know, or, or you know what, this is two words, but we're gonna be ghetto and make it three words. <laughs> Chasing goosebumps. That's our that's our only rule now in the studio. Oh, okay. Is that I, even in searching for music when I'm listening for something. When I get a new album, I'm, I, I want to hear something giving goosebumps. Mm -hmm. So my decision, my choices, even in the studio, I love when we're in the studio and we look at each other and go, oh my God, this, this is amazing. This, that's, <laughs> when we get that, we know we're doing right. You know what I mean? So yes. that's, what, that's what we're doing with Chasing Goosebumps. I would love to see that, especially with your new one. I get that with uh, Deja Vu. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they, they're so amazing. I was, you know, I'm not a nervous person. Uh, I don't really get a like a butterfly thing. But I think walking in the studio with them, was the closest mm -hmm. thing I had being nervous in a long time. You know, just because mm -hmm. they they're amazing. It was really, I walked. So for the second I walked in, I realized, like, oh my god, because it was just like <laughs> it was just crazy as I was. You oh, know what I mean? So it was gosh. cool. Well, the other one that's like that is, um, I would say, is uh, she. Oh, she. Yeah, yeah. 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 Super. The romantic song. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll play that. <laughs> right, right. Smart, smart man. <laughs> See, maybe lose focus. Oh my gosh. So, what do you think is the biggest challenge? In As an independent artist, biggest yeah. challenge uh, is showing people that that it's the same quality. Mm -hmm. I think I think people question quality when they think that it doesn't have the same budget or something. I mean, even, you know, I, I've had the luxury of being able to work on both sides, majors and independents. And we're, you know, a lot of stuff you hear on major labels recorded in bedroom studios, a lot of independent records you hear recorded in these huge, you know, facilities. So, um, to me, it's about finding the right thing and having the right talents on it. But, um, you know, being nominated for Grammys and stuff like that helps in that, helps validate someone who's um, already maybe has preconceived idea of what this must be. They can't imagine it actually being as good as it is because there's no way it can be because it, it didn't have a two hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollar mixing budget or mm -hmm. whatever. But the guy that mixed this record mixed the major record. You know, we, we want to be able to put our album next to Usher or or John Legend or whoever and say, you know, it's the same quality, it's the same, it's the same whatever. You I know? Agree. Yeah. Agree. And to piggyback on the awards just won a stellar award. Yeah, and yeah. How did that feel? Well, you know, I think the whole overall experience of being with the member of United Tenor yes. and, with, and working with Fred Hammond, who was one of the reasons why I started doing mm -hmm. music in the first place, Love him. Um, it was a dream come true and still one of the best experiences that I've ever received mm -hmm. um, working working in the music business. So the stellar was just like, you know, showing us that that um, that we we made the right decision and mm -hmm. the sacrifices that were that we all made as solo artists and as husbands and fathers and stuff like that. I mean, it was a lot of time dedicated. And it's different where, you know, as, a, as, a, as my solo artist, I can say, oh, I'm gonna take this time off and do this, or you know, I, I gotta be here for this doctor appointment for this, for my son, or whatever, whatever. When it's a group thing, it's kind of it's kind of hard. It's, you mm -hmm. know, if this is what we're doing, it's the tour dates. Mm -hmm. Okay, we, we work it out, because this is the tour dates. You know what I mean? It's just trying to, get all this stuff um, figured out. But, but all the sacrifices was worth it. It was great. And like I said, the Stellar Award just showed us, showed us that. So do you find it hard with, you know, with balancing your professional career with your family? I mean, is it a challenge, a really big challenge? I think, I think, you know, balancing family in general is just uh, yeah. a handful regardless. But um, music business, yes, but it, it, it can be doable. And, mm -hmm. and I think it's because my passion for both is, is equally heavy. And, I, and, I, and I, I, I need both to understand that. Just as much as I need my business side to understand that the family is extremely important. I need the family to understand that the business side mm -hmm. is extremely important. But we, we do pretty well with it. We keep the kids around pretty much through the recording process. Demo was at my house recording the other day. And he, he he's, he's eventually going to have to learn that when you record at my house now, you, you're gonna to have to record with the kids. It's just, it's, it's inevitable, you know what I mean? So they're, they're on their little drum sets and they're coming through the glass and got their little toy saxophones and they, 
Yeah, you know, that's just is, that's just what it's gonna be. But you know, as they get a little bit older, they'll they'll probably understand. They'll probably get a chance to respect the focus level as well. Right. But hey, man, it's it's my thing is, if I'm gonna be in that studio for twelve hours, might as well be nine of them be with the kids. Right. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and have a good time. So we, we try to balance the best way we can. Okay. Yeah. So okay, so let's go back a little bit with regards to the people you've collaborated with, um, mm -hmm. Fred Hand and, and David Hollister. Then who's my favorite? Mm. And Robert Glasper. Robert Glasper, great. Love that. Love the song that you have on the studio too. And who haven't you worked with that you would love to work with? Erica Badu comes to mind wow. first and foremost. Will be the be the be the top of the list. I would love just to see. I mean, she's such a creative person, such a great songwriter that I would love to um, just watch her work. Really, you know, I'm in love with Erica Badu as well. My wife knows it. Respectfully, I love you, babe. <laughs> um, so really, so really, um, you know, watching uh, um, everybody make scrambled eggs or, 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 or grilled broccoli or whatever would still be just as enjoyable. But to see her actually come up and craft a song and how she comes up with a process, I think I would wouldn't mind watching that. Um, Bill Withers, I would love to would love to work with. Now I'm very happy to hear that that he's working on music again. You know, because um, that is always. He's somebody, when I heard his music, you know, I just always related to it a great deal, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but the list is so long, I mean, it's a ton of people. It's probably more people I would love to watch work, more mm -hmm. than actually work with them. You know, mm -hmm. work with them is a, is a heavy obligation where I, I'm more just into, I'm, I would love to learn from a lot of people, you know. And not even just from r &B. I mean, there's so, so, so many people that, how did you come up with this line, how did you come up mm -hmm. with this process, you know. That would be the main thing. But it's a, the list is long. The, the, the batteries would all run out before I finish. <laughs> <laughs> well, same here. I have a wish list. Okay, and that has maybe two, two more questions. Two more questions. Oh, that's right. Well, you know what? Oh, Let me right. ask you a question. Yes. Okay. How many rings? <laughs> <laughs> your wedding thing ring. Um, four. 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 Thank you. And how long Over. did you have to work? Oh, no. <laughs> still working, man. Yeah, pretty much. Still working. I got you, man. That, that is, uh, that's pretty serious, man. Well, congratulations. The crazy thing, my wife, I bought her what I thought was an amazing, amazing wedding ring, engagement ring, first and foremost. I didn't know she know where it's at right now. So when you see it now, you're gonna see you have the uh, the wedding, like the small band. Like one of these, she got one of these on. <laughs> the rest of it is probably on a keychain or something, or in the kids. I first looked at the safe. Yeah, that's not the yeah, that's, that's not the original. original. No. Do you hear that anymore? The first that's the that's the that's the decoy. The real decoy. That's the second <laughs> one. I, I know first this is your interview, but let me tell you. Uh, it, you go on a trip, she goes in a diamond store, she starts crying, she walks out with the ring. That's how it works. So she's she's been laying so much from the <laughs> Yeah. From this, yeah. The trip already spending money on Yes. Yeah. Yes. But you can cheaper in the islands here. And you appraise really. more in the States. It ain't that much cheaper, right? It, it is. It is. <laughs> It's all right. I don't need to fly a plane to get a ring. <laughs> I paid for it. I did. I did. That's serious. Okay. All right. Don't, fly. Don't, don't take my wife on trips and don't yes. let her go on the jewelry store. Okay. I got it. I got it. It's not that bad. Stay, that stay away from duty free. <laughs> yeah. That's where it gets you. Duty free. Cool. Did you have a question? Um, no, I'm kind of. She's I'm just home. enjoying the moment. <laughs> okay, that's that's awesome. I'm sorry, I'm just in the moment. Yeah. yeah. It's the whole, this whole everyday thing. It's a family thing. That's good. Yeah, that's behind the camera. Thing. Yeah. That's what it's you all about. That? You hear that, Brother Ray? Yes. I have a question. Brother Ray. Right? Yeah. So how do you feel, like, uh, I just got into an artist named Daily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you feel? I, I'm happy because I like good music. But I, how do you feel that it seems like in the States a lot of music Overseas is starting to come out more because you know you normally get like one artist or two, but it seems like there's a lot more coming out. So it's making a little bit more what? not so focused on certain artists the way the music industry is yeah. as a whole nowadays. Well, you know, I mean, everything comes happens in cycles, and I, that was probably expected when Adele had a really big year, mm -hmm. uh, and really Adele probably. Only reason why we even heard Adele was because of Amy Winehouse, mm -hmm. and Amy Winehouse was rocking over London for a long time before she ever was even heard of here. Um, but it was only it, was, it makes sense that eventually they would say, "Let's find white soulful singers as well." Mm -hmm. And uh, Adele's good kid when he when he first 
even before that song, the mixtape album came out, um, he came here to record. He, he requested uh, me to come in for a session with him. So we didn't really even write that much. We just kind of came in and just kicked it for a day. It was good to meet him and after that. So I'm really happy for his success and everything. But it, um, everything happens in cycles. I mean, that's the same thing in the wave happens of certain artists come overseas mm -hmm. and go go and blow up over there. Um, it's room for it, you know what I mean? But it, but it's, you can kind of expect it. Before Alicia Keys came out playing piano, it was unheard of to have a young pop artist playing piano. But as soon as she did, you noticed there were a lot of them that came to mind. Most of them weren't successful or even stayed around. But you found a lot of these little girls playing piano and singing. Mm -hmm. It's because something has to kind of crack open first. And then um, I just hope that, you know, we have the luxury of, when we, we go to London, we hear a lot of music over there uh, smashing. Oh and say like, man, I, I hope these people show up here. Or even when you go to like Sweden, I remember in my years of going to Sweden, there were just so many amazing artists there um, that, that you never heard of here. Um, and that's probably, but you know, truth be told, that's Chicago and, mm -hmm. and, and Seattle mm -hmm. and you know, and, and San Diego, you'll find these different artists. But man, I hope, I hope the East Coast gets a chance to hear what's going on here or the West Coast gets a chance to hear what's going on here. Um, but it's just, it happens all the time. You know what I mean? I think for me, I don't, um, I'll scratch my head over any of it. To me, mm -hmm. it's just kind of, um, you just watch the waves happen. Right now, that's the wave, the wave of um, European, uh, uh, the, the East coming over, mm -hmm. you know, playing very soulful music too. Yeah. Yeah. I say yeah. we're good. We're good. I have one question. Okay. Yeah. How do you choose which songs you want to perform? Because there's mm. one song that I'd be waiting for you to perform, but you never do it. What song? Show. Babe, what's the name of that show on the song with um by Michael Jackson? Oh, it's on the end of uh um it's in, on the end of uh, Fan First. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. wow. yeah. I love wow. that song about every show. And you know, I said to us probably even last night it was a, a very big request hour type encore, mm -hmm. which um and we we people yelling out songs that you know, and the tough part of being an independent artist. Which one of the challenges is mm -hmm. that you know a lot of the early albums that weren't singles, but like the last album was where I was picture perfect was a single. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you can kind of figure out what the songs were and which ones got some radio play and whatever. Mm -hmm. But the three albums before that, it was just kind of we put an album out, we just worked the record. So you would have these little spots in the crowds usually would pick what song would be. Celebrate was just really a personal song for me. It wasn't I don't know if I ever even thought that man this could be a single or something whatever. It was it was really um, I was, I was a studio I used to work at. I still get my records mixed called uh, Nightfly Studios in, um, in Maryland. And uh, there was a good friend of mine named Scotty Beats that, uh, that I worked with during like, my Howard days. And Scotty unfortunately got killed yeah, yeah. some years ago. And I wrote the song about Scotty, you know what I mean? So um, I, I would love it, but the band doesn't know it. So that would be, that'd be a real tough song to sing. But it, it would, uh, I remember doing a homecoming party, and the party majority of the people at the party were friends of mine as well as friends with Scotty and they weren't letting me go out the stage and sing the song and it was like we, we I was prepared for it I, we, but we, we did it we threw, we threw the instrument on we threw the record on and I just sang with it and but it helped those guys heal man those guys really hadn't had a chance to really uh, mourn him like that or celebrate him shall I say mm -hmm. like that you know but um that's been the toughest part there's always I mean truth be told I don't think I can do a show without someone in the crowd going, man, I really wish you did that song. But that's just because we put a lot of music out. And, uh, and as, you know, we put a lot of music out early on without the major label business structure. Mm -hmm. We are, you know, a person put a 13 song album out. The major label put a whole bunch of money behind one song. And they just took money out one song, you know. Um, so we, we try to fit in as many as we could and you know try to find the right formula. Certain songs we would do in DC that we wouldn't do in Chicago and vice versa, you know, because they say, okay, this one works here and that works there. But it's always that's a headache. That's like we pull our hair out almost every show trying to figure that out though. Name all the all heads. Hair, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's been the most stressed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the most stressed. The most stressed. <laughs> <laughs> you got one more if you want. We do? Okay. Yeah. I know it's not really a good question, but here we go. What should we expect in October on the cruise? <laughs> <laughs> Come here, female, yes. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, you know, the great thing is uh, not to give away too much. Uh, effort. Yeah. I think I think that's probably the best thing. I mean, because what's going to happen is the cruise is going to happen, and then we can't predict what. I mean, that's right. I, almost the same way. I, I, we're here now, so I can right. kind of predict what's going to happen now. 
I'm okay. very much a very now person. Okay. Like case when we did the 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 the, 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 the excursion. <laughs> yeah. 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 We started brainstorming like you know let's okay it's so island all right why don't we do like fantasy island and we started brainstorming and of course I have the, the greatest sidekick in the world yeah. to, to Robin to the Batman who's just willing to go whatever you know so okay I'll well, play tattoo let's do it you know so I think um the challenge is that we had a really fun time that time uh, you know. They'll let us know what excursions are, they'll let us know what opportunities are, this this night you're performing, this you want your host. And from there, we'll, you know, best know that we'll be dressed to the nines. Yes. Yes. And, uh, and yeah, and we'll too. And hopefully I'll know, this is what I will say, hopefully I'll know ahead of time what the uh, night is, like the 80s, 90s. Oh, <laughs> man. He won't let us live that, we won it. You guys won. <laughs> 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 you know, right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you guys won. So, you know, I want to, you know, I, I plan to prepare, okay. you know, heads up. And even like a red night, I, I just happen to have a red blazer with me. I didn't even know that there was a red yeah. night. But I but I, but I, I want to make sure I know what's going on next time. So, you know, I'll make a statement with you.